Hello everybody, welcome back. If you've been watching our uh, previous episodes of Planet Zoo, that, that's great. Um, hi, if you haven't, that's also great. Thank you for, for giving this one a go. Um, today, having having sort of started building the zoo from the front, we're going to be looking at the warthogs a little bit more and uh, also our, res our new resident, the rhinos. Um, before we do that though, I'm just going to explain. I'm going to for the time being, I'm going to take a different approach to, to making these videos. Um, rather than trying to do the builds live, I'm going to do the building and creation off camera and then uh, sort of give you a tour of what's what's being added um, like, like this. So um, if you like this, please do let me know. If you'd prefer it to be the other way around so that we're building on camera, then uh, please do yeah, comment uh, down, down below or come and find us on our Facebook or Twitter pages um, at well I'll put the links for those in um, in the description um, please do as well like and subscribe because liking and subscribing the more people that like the more likely it is that our videos will get served to new viewers new um, interested parties uh, so yeah liking and subscribing and, and if you like subscribe and click the bell the bell will make sure that you get told when these the videos come out uh, so yeah all of those things that would be great um so yeah today we're going to be having a little look at the warthogs the last episode was actually sort of figuring out this warthog enclosure um this bit here i've added the seating um this is the cafe bembe uh, seating area so you, you get to sit down have a cup of tea in the real zoo and over have a look at the um have a look at the warthogs as you do uh, I've also added this planting over here in these two benches. So the planting here is it actually goes around what's going to be the zoo mobility buildings here. Um, the planting, if you've been to the zoo, is quite um, eclectic in this particular area. There's sort of red bushes and um, sort of broadleaf bushes and all sorts of different stuff going on in here. None of which is in the game. So I've had to sort of do the best with what I've got. Um, a couple of these are, in fact, a few of these are trees that I've planted further deeper into the ground to make sure uh, to make it look more bushy uh, but I think it looks good other than that errant uh, tree there which is in the wrong place uh, in terms of pathing I've been hiding so far all of my pathing underneath these concrete uh, flooring tiles um, which is why the people can get along even though it doesn't look like uh, they should be able to so there's a big path going down there and there's a path running down here which lets them get to the warthogs quite easily uh, I also built this. This is actually on the um, on the workshop for anyone that is interested. Um, if you're playing the game, you can, anything that's on the workshop you can download and have in the game. So this is a planter that is similar to the one that is actually in the zoo. If I just bring that up and I'll spin it round, it's uh, it's this one here. So it's not quite the right colours, but I I couldn't get it to look any any good with the naturalistic wood colours. Um, so I've gone for what I've got. And that you can see in the game. Um, I think it looks quite good. There's been a few people who've already downloaded it, and feel free to do so. I'll, I'll pop a link to the um, to the workshop page uh, for this game. Where's workshop page in the description below? Um, oh, this fence as well. I'm actually quite pleased with this fence. It's uh, sort of a natural wood, um, one meter high fence. Uh, looks looks pretty good. I'm I'm pleased with how it turned out. Uh, quite a lot of people have downloaded that one as well. So um, yeah, if you want to use a natural wood fence, you don't want to build it in game. Um, please do go and go and grab it off the off the workshop. Um, if you did watch the last video with the warthogs, you will notice probably that the terrain. I've rejigged the terrain quite substantially. I've added a bit more planting down here to make it to fill it out a bit further. Um, but the big change is that I've done their housing. So the shelter, this is actually in the zoo, in Chester Zoo, this is a shared shelter between the rhinos and, oh, eastern black rhinos and uh, warthogs. Um, it also, again, you might have got a little glimpse of it when I brought up uh, this page. So this is the this is the actual building itself. And if you look at it, it's quite mottled. So there's lots of different materials going on here, sort of red brick, sandstone type stuff, sat yellow sandstone here and then like a plaster all down the bottom with this like spackly type stuff here so there is no way to do that in the game um, I've had all sorts of 
little goes, little experiments, trying to sort of make mixed material uh, looks on this building, but I've not been able to do much with it. What I have done is build it out of sandstone and then take a piece of barrier, a redwood barrier, and I wrapped it round the edge of the um, building here so so that it kind of looks like it's made out of two buildings, almost like this piece has fallen down at some point and then they've rebuilt it. And I've done a similar thing here as well, except I've, um, I've just changed a section of red brick which leaves the cement block here to to again almost look like it's had to be repaired um at some point in the in the past um i'm going to keep experimenting with with mixed material buildings because it's the only way to really get them to look old the, this game is very good for building sort of extravagant um really luxurious buildings lavish buildings but i'm yet to see anything that allows you to quite easily build something that has been there for a long time um unless it's ornate in in some kind of sort of stately home style uh, this is a ramshackle sandstone outbuilding and building it in the in the game is difficult it, it still looks too well put together still looks too new too pristine but it is what it is and it as I've said in previous uh, videos, the game will force us to compromise again and again. That's just part of the challenge, really, of building uh, of building Chester Zoo, of building anything real. Um, we've had a similar issue here. So this fencing here, uh, if I take you over to have a look at that again in real in real life, if you look at it here, they've actually done quite a good job of of making it all at one level. Um, lining up the joins um, it looks weathered but it for all, for the most part it's well constructed it's put together well if you compare that with the one that's in the game the, the one that I've built apologies for that with the one that I've built if you look at the one that I've built if I show you the one that I've built you'll notice that it sort of dips down as it goes along so if I were to just skirt along there it dips down and there's joins that aren't matching up and you see here um, and it keeps going on like that it sort of goes up and down and it looks fairly slipshod and, and badly built and that's actually on purpose um, because when I made it pristine when I joined everything up in in uh, really well lined up it, it just wasn't working it, it looked too pretend it looked fake is what I'm saying and I'm still not particularly happy with it I don't like the way that this shines um, in the light I think the colors about right but you're not getting the wood grain effect and, and you've got this shininess to it um, but when it was all lined up it just looked like a big old tube whereas now at the very least it looks like something that's man-made something that's constructed um, and I'm not I'm not unhappy with it but I'm not happy with it either I've I've coupled it up with um, behind it I've got the uh, drywall so it's actually the drywall top that I've used um, which is to try and mimic what they've got going on in the zoo. Uh, again, I've put this this fencing on the workshop, so if you're playing and you want to grab that, then by all means do so. Um, so again, yeah, there's there's quite a lot of mixed fencing in this in this enclosure. This is the uh, one of the eastern black rhinos enclosures. So if I show you uh, again in real life what what this fence looks like this is the sort of thing that I was going for um, and again you'll be you'll be surprised or unsurprised to hear that it was difficult making that I've actually had to use non fencing pieces um, to do it if I so I've used African sheet sunshades beam uh, to make this it's got nothing to do with fences but it was the the only way that I could get something that sort of looked used i i've kind of this mottling here makes it look a bit weathered again and which which is the same thing that i was going for with the fencing over here like a weathered fencing look um and i think it works okay it particularly works well with the electric fencing because it's got these sort of brass colored or, or rusted colored um like latch things which presumably were for holding up the sunshade but they they actually look like they're attaching to the electric fence behind it um, in some places which is which works well enough for me 
Uh, this is one of the um, smaller shelters that the rhinos have in the in the real zoo. Um, I built that out of it's just one piece of metal cladding on the top, and then some um, some fen uh, some poles. So they're habitat poles. If you're looking to build something like that, they're the habitat poles. Um, I I messed around in this enclosure with if you see these divots here, they kind of work. As they are but they were actually me messing around with putting water in this enclosure if you go to the real zoo there isn't water really in this enclosure but the game in order to keep rhinos happy the game wants you to put water in so um, oh it's telling me I've got enough water now so that's good I don't know where that water is I've, I've hidden some inside I'll show you that in a second um, but yeah they want a certain amount of water and it just wasn't registering in the end I decided to take the water out outside and hide it inside like this um, that doesn't look like enough water to me but the game's saying that there is plenty so uh, that is that's fine by me if it's not going to complain uh, our, our rhinos for anyone that is playing the game or anyone that knows their rhinos um, are the wrong rhinos so the game will require us to make some compromises we only have Indian rhinoceros in the game at the moment and obviously these should be Eastern Blacks um, in this enclosure if you're at Chester Zoo um, if they get added my plan is that if they get added to the game later on I'm gonna um, add I'm gonna replace animals as they as they come up but I I want to try and get a sense of it being a zoo I don't want it just to have lots and lots of empty enclosures that I've built for specific animals that don't exist in the game so the compromise here is that we use the rhinos that we've got and then we replace them if we get the rhinos that we want um, the other that so again this is this is in danger of becoming me just moaning about what I can't do in the game but uh, the other problem that I've had uh, trying to figure out the warthogs and the rhinos is is these paths that they use so the the lines in the ground that they uh, that show where they tend to walk out in their enclosures um, the terrain painter you have different sizes uh, so you can change that from one all the way up to 20 and if you have it on one um, it doesn't really do anything if I if I were to paint there now I'm not really getting any change and that means that I can't put in these narrow, narrow paths. I'm having to use at least a number two, and it's making the paths a lot bigger. And therefore, you can't get so you can't get as much detail as I'd like to to get in because there are actually branching paths in this rhino enclosure going going off, particularly over here, like branching off the main thoroughfare. Similarly, on uh, on the warthogs down this side, there are path, paths that the warthogs tend to take that have been worn into the ground that I just can't recreate um, and it's a real shame um, but equally I don't think it looks too bad as it is um, I, I'm pretty pleased with what I've been able to accomplish particularly with this building it, it's it wasn't easy to make it look even as it does sort of getting getting the right materials getting them to look the way they look in real in the real world um, it, that is a challenge and that's where the challenge comes in in this uh, in this series so um, yeah if you if you like what we've been doing please do give us a follow and please do feel free as well if you're if you're trying to replicate anything or if you can't find any of the materials that we've been using just drop us a, a message either down below in the comments on on YouTube or go over to our Facebook pages or Twitter um, and have uh, ask your question there that I'm happy to answer um, so yeah we we will be carrying on with this uh, series we, we've got a lot of a lot of ground to cover there's a there's a lot going on in the zoo and we've already started mapping out over over here the other two rhino enclosure or sorry three rhino enclosures across here there's also going to be meerkats over here and and porcupines I think are in there as well um, Next, though, I think I'm going to give it give the enclosures a break. I'm going to focus on getting Cafe Bembe, which is quite an interesting um, looking building, quite a nice shape, and then Zoo Mobility. So the, there's going to be two buildings that I do, and then probably back to Rhinos. Um, if you are enjoying things, 
Um, we do also have a podcast. You can find that at the link in the description, and you can also watch our previous Sue videos um, on these links that have just popped up. Um, yeah, just one last thing. If you, as I said before, if you would link and like and subscribe, that would be great. Okay, have a good day. Bye.